What's up guys, this is Monty coming to you with another video. Um, today I'm going to talk about substrate. The reason is that, just a little background, I started this tank about 6-7 months ago. It's a pretty fairly new tank and um, finally at a point where I want to see some more out of it. And I want to do more to it, I want to get it ready fully ready for um, a reef I mean as you can see I have a couple of corals in here right now let me get a closer look you see it says one there this one uh, is a pipe organ I bought this about um, I would say about three weeks ago and I'm still not seeing the extension that I would like to see I mean, they're a little bit coming up, but when I got it, bought it at the store, it was fully extended. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. There's not a lot of videos about these uh, pipe organs, uh, um, you know, about their characteristic. Maybe, I don't know if they take longer than they usually other corals to extend, but this one is taking a sweet time. Um, yeah, I mean, I got mushrooms. I got mushrooms here and I got another one here now back to the main topic um what I want to do is I want to get rid of um this crushed coral substrate that I have that I started off with um you know it's a begin it's a good beginner you know it's low maintenance it's not that difficult to clean you get a siphon going you don't have to worry about the gravel being sucked in when you're trying to siphon the water but at this moment I'm trying to get it I'm trying to get used to the hobby now uh, you know I'm not a beginner full like new beginner at, you know I hope not <laughs> um, you know I'm getting to the point where I want to do sand bed and I've been doing research on sand beds and as far as how to change the substrate and everything. You know, I'm hearing a lot of stuff. People are, everybody has their own opinion, as you can say. Um, now, I heard a couple of things. Some people say, you know, you know, remove a little, like, remove portions of your gravel and then replace it with, um, sand and you know do it do it portion wise very small portion so you know you don't get any spike in your chem water chemistry um, now that the process I mean the idea behind this sounds legitimate but the problem that I have is that if I just take a scoop let's say I take from that corner to here this amount of gravel out right and I replace it with the sand the live sand I'm gonna use I'm thinking about using the Fiji um, Argolive uh, live sand now let's say I take a little like a scoop from, from like this portion out like this portion out and I replace it with sand and the next day I take this portion out and replace it with sand what's gonna happen is that I'm not gonna have hundred percent crushed coral removal there's always gonna be crushed corals that is gonna stay there that I have no control over now what I want to do is have a pure sand bed I do not want crushed corals that I you know unwanted crushed corals hanging around on my substrate and Part of the reason why, one of the reasons why I'm thinking about getting rid of this uh, gravel crush uh, substrate is because um, my nitrates, I'm having trouble lowering my nitrates. Now, I am running a protein skimmer, um, so, I mean, it's still breaking in at this moment, uh, as you can see, it's the hang on the back. Um, that's rated for about a hundred gallon mine's a 40 gallon but that's still you know and I'm using canister filter as you can see right there um, you know I don't have any I don't have a you know sump or anything like that as you can see underneath my gallon 
maybe down in the future maybe um, financially haven't thought about it it's a pretty expensive thing and uh, yeah I mean people suggested phosphate reactors to get you know get rid of nitrates and as you can see in the back of my wall you know there's algae growth you know on my thing as you can see algae growth there oh and ignore those little particles I just fed the tank <laughs> so they're just floating around right now um, so part of the reason someone I was told that the reason my nitrates um, are floating around 20 to 40 even though that's not a dangerous um, like dangerous dangerous level you know 40 should be the max if it's over 40 then your fish start dying um, but I don't want to have my nitrates floating around 20 to 40 because I am going to start adding corals and I they, I need perfect, you know, near perfect water perimeters for my corals and my fish. Um, now, I'm doing a lot, a couple of things to bring this nitrate problem down and ammonia problem down. The ammonia problem was that I have three tanks in my tank right now. As you can see, the sailfin tank, the yellow tank, and the purple tank. Now, um, I was told, uh, you know, I heard somewhere that, you know, too many tanks. That's the problem. That's the reason my ammonia is so spiking up. My ammonia floats around 0.25. So, that's, I had three tanks, and I had, and altogether, I had about nine fishes in this tank. Now, that's too many fish for a 40 gallon. You know, especially when I, when I don't have refugium or a sump, uh, you know. So, yeah. So, what I had to do was I had to get rid of three of the three fishes. I took out three fishes from the tank. Um, I had three damsels in it. I took those out. I just kept these pretty ones, more expensive ones, <laughs> as you can say. Um, yeah. So I left these and. That's one one of the process that I took to bring down the ammonia and the nitrate problem. Another was that the protein skimmer I did not have the protein skimmer before. I had this I had this skimmer for about three weeks I, I believe. So still you know breaking in. Water changes. I'm doing a lot of wa more more water change. And I, you know, let me correct myself. And yeah. Some so another thing with this. So this substrate is part another part of this nitrate removal or you know bringing down the nitrate level pro issue um, what the gravel substrate does is it traps a lot of um, a lot of gunk uneaten food and you know waste fish waste it traps it I mean you can siphon it but you can never properly get rid of all the stuff I mean and being that these are crushed coral I mean the water movement alone is not really doing the justice because it has cracks and nudges the you know the food the waste goes all in the bottom you know and also another part of another added incentive for removing the gravel is aesthetics you know I'm getting tired of looking at this gravel I mean it's okay it's pretty rugged looking but I I want peace I want peace and quiet and looking nice look like a real reef you know so that's another reason uh, so you know and what else did I do with my nitrate try to bring it down feeding feeding the fishes so I was feeding them um, twice a day every day small portion but twice a day um, I stopped doing that I brought it down to once a day seven days a week uh, even then my nitrous weren't going down so now at this moment what I am doing is I'm feeding them five times a week so out of the seven days I feed them five days I mean I, I divide it up the hours you know so it's even this is they're not starving all day so five times a day five times a week I mean I'm sorry five times a week I'm feeding them target feeding I don't throw cubes in the water and <laughs> just let it float around you know get a um, turkey baster like everybody you know everybody else does target feed the fishes 
Um, so that's another, another thing to think about if you're having nitrate problems or ammonia. Now, back to the main topic why I'm doing this video. I'm going to get rid of this gravel now and put sand in it. And one of the suggestions I was told like is remove partial gravel removal, replacing it with sand. So the, you know, so the water chemistry doesn't spike up. Now, I don't like that process. I honestly don't. It doesn't seem feasible for me. It's, uh, I don't like it. There has to be a better way. So, what I thought about doing is, um, what I'm going to do is, next week when I do my water change, I'm going to take all of this gravel out. Everything. Down to the bare bottom. So, when I do that water change next week, only thing left is going to be this live rock, the corals, those little decoration plants. I mean, I'm going to get rid of them, you know, every new buy these stupid plants for decoration when they first get their tank. But they're going to be gone because my tank is not going to look like this in a month. Guarantee it. <laughs> um, yeah, so all the gravel is going to be out. It's going to be strictly bare bottom, just the glass. And then I'm going to leave it for another couple of days, just glass, just to see how the water chemistry does with just bare bottom. Now, I also want to remind you guys, I am curing dry rock as we speak. They're in my basement in a dark room being cycled. You know, so those I'm, I'm going to be adding more live rock in this tank. This is not enough for 40 gallon. So I have more being cured as we speak so what, what I'm gonna do is get rid of the gravel just bare bottom and and then I'm gonna start adding cupfuls of live sand in this tank so then I don't have to worry about gravel being left in this tank while I'm put adding the sand so I'm gonna still I'm gonna take the advice I was given I'm gonna little I'm gonna alter it to my liking so they I was told you know add a cup full of live sand every day slowly add it and test your water perimeters and see how the water reacts but instead of removing the gravel cup full and then replacing with sand I'm going to take all of it out leave it blank and then I'm going to start adding one cup full of live sand every day slowly until I fill the whole tank and this process will give me enough time for my um my dry rocks to become live rocks so the process is gonna they're gonna work hand in hand and so by the time i'm done or i'm close to done filling the tank with live sand my live rock is gonna be ready i'm, I'm gonna get to re re aquascape this whole tank get it ready properly aquascaped for a reef and corals and yeah that's the plan for now and you know just keep checking out my videos you know, like I said, I am not an expert. I am not an advanced aquarist either. I'm not, I wouldn't call myself an intermediate either. I'm a beginner. And uh, you're gonna, you're going through the process of how a beginner, you know, aquarist, a reef keeper goes through, you know, the learning process. You know, I mean, I, I see all these videos of all these great, great, you know, reef keepers and you know aquarists and you know have great advice and i appreciate them they have helped me a lot you know um i'm not going to mention names because um you you thank one guy then the other guy gets mad and stuff so i'm not gonna you know they, they know who they are you know you know everyone follows them and they're great so no, no need to throw out any names i mean they're all great but i've never seen I have, you know, that's the reason why I started doing these videos. You know, I, I wasn't gonna do these videos at all. You know, the reason I'm doing it because, you know, there's no one has ever done a step by step from beginning till to the end. You know, I mean, everybody does videos when they're all ready on the tank is ready and stuff, so they get advice. But no one has done a, you know, a video series or a channel, YouTube channel dedicated to, um, you know reef keepers, the saltwater enthusiasts, um, 
tank enthusiasts going through the process on a daily basis and facing the challenges you know that's what i'm that's why i'm doing it so you know you guys are going to be on this journey with me you know my tank is you know if you look at it you know this is not how a proper reef tank should look like you know i know it it's gonna get there you know and i don't have a lot of money you know i don't have a very i don't have a very good job you know my job doesn't pay me enough <laughs> you know so these you know upgrades to the tank upgrades for the fish i mean is th these things will take time for me at least uh, you know other people have more money to spend on their tank i don't so my for me i gotta find um different ways of achieving the same result you know so yeah it's my struggle and you guys are i mean i thank you guys for watching my video and you know leave comments you know or ideas you know if you see i'm, I'm doing something wrong let me know like i said i'm not an expert i'm just going through the process of being a saltwater tank enthusiast and you know i'm just sharing with you guys i am not you know giving you advice i'm just telling you what i am doing so if you're facing the same challenges you know wait for me to do it <laughs> and see my result and then you could you know use that advice you know i will i will never do something without telling you guys about it first so like i said you know about the software change i could have done the software change and made a video but like oh i did this this but no that's not how i'm going to do it I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna what I'm gonna do, and you're gonna I'm gonna show step by step how I'm doing it. Because that's the that's the um, that's what that's what you don't see a lot. People actually doing it in the videos. They talk about it. They talk about how they did it, but no one shows you. There's not enough video showing you how to do it. Now, for example, when I got that protein skimmer, I had problems with that, um, and there wasn't enough videos on YouTube. Uh, showing me how to work that protein skimmer it, you know I had to do some trial and error to get that one running I mean it's, it is a cheaper protein skimmer it's about cost me what $160 you know it's hanging in the back it's nothing nothing major um, yes yeah, reef octopus uh, I believe it's the classic 90 model yeah there's not enough um, videos on these um, I don't know if I want to make one I mean, my skimmer is already up and running right now. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a missed opportunity. Sorry about that, guys. Anyway, back to this. Um, so, yeah, the, there's a couple of more stuff coming to this tank. For example, you know, after I change the substrate to sand, live sand, and do the aquascape, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to need to add more... Um, cleanup crew i mean at this moment all you see is this one cleaner ship i mean i mean i did have three i bought three um snails that i can't find in this tank anymore i don't know where they went i mean i moved the stuff around a couple of times they're nowhere to be found maybe they died i don't know exactly what's going on so i'm gonna have to get more cleanup crews um yeah so that's the next uh, agenda i'm not gonna be adding any more fish to this tank not until I see my nitrates and my ammonia levels come to an expectation level. And after I add cleanup crews. For me, the priority is the substrate, the aquascape, and then the cleanup crew. And then we'll see. We'll take it from there. You know, I'll keep you guys updated as always. Um, yeah. So, you know, once again, you guys are always welcome to comment. Tell me if I'm doing something wrong. You know, tell me if you have a better way of doing what I'm doing. So I know how to do it better. You know, I'm you know, I'm always open to like, new ideas. You know, you know this you know this idea of mine about removing all the gravel, going bare bone, and then adding sand slowly. I've never seen anybody do it on YouTube. I have looked it up. No one has done it. This is good. I'm gonna be the first one to do it, and you know, hopefully it'll work out the way I'm hoping for it to work out. But time will tell. You know, and I'll let you guys know. I'll try it out for you.